Hello, and thank you for watching this September 28th weather update, brought to you by Agrable, the makers of Morning Farm Report. My name is Eric Snodgrass, and I'm a senior atmospheric scientist and co-founder of Agrable. Let's start out this week by looking at the most recent U.S. drought monitor. At first glance, our eyes are drawn to the large region of exceptional drought in the West. Before we look into the Corn Belt, we need to discuss this drought situation, as the rainy season is about to set in along the West Coast. This map shows the forecast for precipitation anomalies, or differences from normal, for this winter. This forecast has been remarkably consistent over the last few months, which builds my confidence in its accuracy. As we would expect with a strong El Nino, more than normal precipitation is expected through most of California. This is excellent news as winter snowpack in the Sierra Nevadas is absolutely crucial for agriculture in this state. Winter 2014-15 saw one of the smallest snowpacks on record for these mountains, so this forecast bodes well for an attempt at a recovery from this historic drought. Unfortunately, California's drought has extended its reach through Oregon, Idaho, and Washington, and several models, including Agrable's own long-range models, suggest continued dry weather in this region. As such, irrigation efforts for next spring will again be stressed. Looking at the eastern half of the United States, we can see a forecast for slightly drier than average conditions in the Midwest, while the southeast is forecast to receive above average rainfall. Checking in on that drought monitor, it is clear that a wetter than average winter will help alleviate the drought that has formed in the southeast over the last couple of months. Well, since we've been looking into the longer term forecast of precipitation, we should also look at the forecast for temperatures this winter. Bitterly cold winters are fresh in our minds, as is the memory of high-priced propane. This graph shows the temperature anomaly forecast for December through February, and the consensus is calling for cooler than normal temperatures in the southern states, with slightly warmer than normal temperatures across the northern tier of the country. These temperature patterns are very typical of El Nino, and given the forecast of a strong El Nino, the probability of having these temperature anomalies are quite high. Well, now that we've had the long-term weather outlook, let's look at what's happened in the last week, and then look ahead of the conditions during harvest. Two large weather systems flanked the Midwest over the last week. First, beginning last Tuesday, the rain we forecast for parts of Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, and the Dakotas, and Minnesota did its best to slow harvest. Eastern Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, and Indiana saw several great days of low humidity and warm temperatures, and the harvest operations were kicked into high gear. Toward the end of the week, a surge of tropical moisture spawned numerous widespread showers and storms in the southeast, including some severe storms that produced tornadoes. As this weather system spread throughout the southeast, it produced a relatively rare, strong easterly wind across much of the Corn Belt over the weekend. The good news is that these rains will make a significant dent in the drought in the southeast. The impacts on agriculture, though, include a slowing down of the planting of barley in this region, as well as the early harvest of cotton and peanuts. Looking ahead, here's NOAA's five-day precipitation outlook issued on Sunday evening. We can see how the southeast is experiencing more rain again Monday night into Tuesday. This spreads through the northeast to the middle of the week. Elsewhere, showers and storms spread across Nebraska and Iowa on Monday night and Tuesday. Although Indiana and Illinois look dry, southern Illinois and southern Indiana could clip part of the precipitation spreading northward from the Gulf of Mexico, and showers could pass through these states Monday evening through Tuesday. However, most locations that are harvesting beans and corn will have decent conditions this week once the forecast rains move through. Cooler air arrives on Tuesday morning as a cold front pushes through the Corn Belt. This will knock temperatures down about 10 degrees for most places in the Midwest, compared to this past weekend's temperatures. Wednesday and Thursday morning temperatures in Minnesota and Wisconsin will fall to around 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and possibly a bit lower. But cooler temperatures like these are about three weeks late for this region. Looking into next weekend, here are the 6-10 to 10 day temperature and precipitation forecasts. Cooler than average weather is forecast for parts of the Appalachians, while warm conditions return out west. Forecast models are suggesting another rain event pushing across the Great Plains, as the low-pressure system is forecast to form around Friday near Colorado and Wyoming. We will monitor this closely as winter wheat planting is underway in parts of the Great Plains. Well, speaking of planting winter wheat, here's a look at the current soil moisture conditions in the United States. 
On the left, we have soil moisture percentiles, and on the right is a map that shows changes over the past week. Where winter wheat is grown in the Pacific Northwest, there's a lot of concern over adequate moisture for germination without significant irrigation efforts. The Dakotas are not significantly stressed for moisture, but recent heavy rain in western Iowa and nearby areas have soil moisture content near capacity. We will continue to update these graphs as this information is extremely useful for those who are planning tillage soon. Well, as always, we at Agri will bring you the latest and best weather forecast information through our morning farm report so that you can efficiently plan your operations. We thank you for your attention and hope you look forward to our next weather video update. Thank you.